This video is all about a battery degradation test I did on my Tesla Model 3 behind me. It's a 2019, done 93,500 miles, and I bought it used two years ago with 56,000 miles on it. So I'm really interested to find out what the battery health is like. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? The test was done at a friend Andy's house and we were there the, the last episode checking out his Tesla powered Porsche and some other really exciting cars there. So check that out. And I'll put the video up here on the screen somewhere. We used his Scan My Tesla app to get all the information to find out the battery degradation. So check this out. We are going to check Rusty's battery because Andy's got some software where we can plug it in and check battery voltages and also yeah, health of the pack, stuff like that. So I thought, let's do it, because I want to see what the health of Rusty's pack's like, because it's done 93,000 miles, so it'd be interesting to see what the degradation is. So what we've done already is we've taken the cover off the back here very carefully, and we're going to uh, reset the um, car, and then we're going to plug in this uh, OBD port, um, and uh, that will connect via Bluetooth to uh, Andy's phone and we can have a look at the data. So yeah, let's do that now. So we've just unplugged that. So uh, again, sorry for all the horrible <laughs> crisps or whatever it is under here. So we plug in, is it, OB, is it OBD port, is it? Uh, so it actually, yeah, so it doesn't have an OBD port, but this is an OBD port. So ah, this is what right. I'm used to working with on nearly every car, sort of from 1996. Yeah. So you've got to generate one by breaking the harness, putting this piggyback harness in, and it gives you an OBD port by just tapping oh, yeah. into the wires that you'd, you'd normally get it from. But yeah, it Tesla doesn't have one natively. Yeah, watch this space. If there's anybody that wants to uh, uh, sort me out a rear screen for one of these and uh, we can give it a review then uh, yeah send it my way we'll do that because I could really do with one keep the kids entertained so this is so what's this actually called this is the so th this is the um, OBD link uh, this is the LX model which works with Android there's an MX model which works with I think Apple uh, oh, okay. Apple based as well Apple yeah. based okay the fruit based uh, product lovely <laughs> all right let's have a little look let's see what it says so we've plugged it in and this is the most important bit actually which is the BMS and in the brightest it will show the highest voltage of the cells and in black it will show the lowest one and the highest is 3.910 which is at the top left hand corner there and then the lowest is 3.895 so and yeah so it's not a massive difference there but yeah there has been some degradation which is expected and I suspected it looking at the recent mileage. But if we go to, there's also a summary page, isn't there, Andy? Which is on battery. So that will give us the battery voltage. And the car's all off now because we turned the power off, which is in safety mode, by the way. Um, so hence why there's very minimal battery current there. Uh, battery power's minimal. Um, but yeah, we've got the max pack voltage there. 403. That's healthy, yeah, so yeah. it's over 400 volts. And this, this is what it comes down to when you're quite close to 0%. And a really interesting one is where it will show the amount of DC charging and AC charging. So it's not far, well, it's about 5,000, was it megawatts, uh, mega kilowatts between each other. So 13,311 kilowatt hours on DC and 18,687 on AC charging. Yeah, so 13 megawatt hours uh, versus about 19 megawatt hours. So sort of, not quite, but about a third to two thirds maybe on the AC front. So it's had a, you know, fair amount of supercharging, but like you say, that might've been previous owner and yours is majority AC now. Um, we've got regen total there, 8,720, that's not well, bad, is it? That's impressive, yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. it? Wow. Eight, eight, eight megawatt hours you've got to come back on, or nearly nine megawatt hours of you've, you've regen in total. I'll have to work that one out. Uh, yeah, 27 megawatt hours is, is what it's consumed. And we've got nominal full pack 66.4, and we worked out that that means that it's got about 89%. Percent. Yeah, 89% of its original. Left. And what, what mileage are you on? Uh, 93,000. So it is quite. I think it's quite bad degradation, really. Um, not, I suppose it's, what, temps, just over 10%, 93,000 miles. Whereas Andy's is, what's yours at with 220,000? Uh, so 
similar-ish, I think. Um, I've I've seen it wobble between sort of eighty-six and eighty-eight. There so, we go. So yeah, it uh, depending on you know temperatures and things like that, I suppose. But no, it's great to see. Is there anything else that's important on here? So this is giving you your volt spread, as we saw earlier oh, yes. with the BMS three point nine one. The min is, is three point eight nine six. That obviously determines your capacity to some extent because that's going to be the first uh, cell grouping that actually gets to zero percent so yep. it doesn't matter what the rest are that you know the battery pack will shut down when that one particular cell group it's a reasonably tight spread you can see it's about 0 0.02 volts hard to say like what's average on these things really i would say that's actually pretty good yeah if people could share their uh, ranges if they've uh, done it on their own tesla model 3 long ranges it'd be good to see uh, a few differences i'll probably put it on the uh, uh, facebook group as well so uh, there's another interesting one you've got your discharge cycles there so um 592 so you're about a third of the way through its life Okay. Um, because, well, very roughly speaking, um, Tesla say 1,500 cycles they expect right. the battery to make, which would put yours at, I suppose, getting on for 300,000 miles ish yeah. would, would be about um, 1,500 is, discharge. Is, it doesn't mean a battery will fail at that no. point. It's just saying Tesla sort of think that's yeah. on average that's what it will make. Just wanted to say, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And there's loads of other videos on the channel, TVR. Tesla conversion, which we vlog in, um, modified Tesla, Rusty, of course, talking about that. We've gone to loads of EV conversion places, loads in there. So check it out and also our lives on a Thursday, eight o'clock. That we uh, don't know about, and I'm not sure if someone can comment on this, whether it does change depending on the temperature, because it's pretty cold here today, it's sort of four or five degrees. So whether that does make a difference on the figures as well. So if you think it does, or have you seen evidence of that, uh, please put it in the comments and uh, we'll check when it's warmer to see if it does make a difference. So, I mean, just to be completely clear what we're saying, we, we know for a fact consumption definitely goes up mm. when the batteries are cold, but what would be interesting to know is whether or not the actual capacity does vary with temperature. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. That would no. be interesting to find out. Yeah, well, if someone can let us know, or no doubt we'll find out when it gets warmer, we'll check it out again. So yeah, there we go. You made a really interest, uh, interesting comment, and I've had it, heard it a few times as well, is the fact that the main degradation on uh, certainly a Tesla battery is within the first 100,000 miles. So it might be the fact that the next 100,000 miles, it doesn't actually change too much in terms of um, range and battery degradation. But time will tell. We'll, we'll monitor it uh, so you know we can uh, have a look to see how it does change moving forward. That was about 60% state of charge. That, that's what it said on the uh, actual summary as well, actually. Let's go and have another look. So I think it was 60 something, wasn't it? There we go, 63.5. 63.5 SOC. So go. you tend to find that the um, these tighten up as you get closer to 100%, mm. uh, and they tend to widen when you get closer to 0%. There we um, go. And there is another way of testing the battery. You can put it in service mode on the car, um, but it completely uh, decharges your battery. That's not the right word, but discharges, you know I mean. yeah. discharges, discharges the and battery. And it recharges the battery, and it, it calculates what's going into the battery and gives you a, a battery health check. There we go. Uh, it's another way of doing it, which you don't have to buy the hardware or plug it in, but it does take about 24 hours and needs to be plugged in for a while. There we go. And I think what we'll do is uh, next time that me and Andy meet up, we'll probably plug it in again just to see if it's made much difference. Um, and you know, obviously, uh, what, what's the Tesla uh, warranty? It's seven under seventy percent, isn't it, within the battery uh, warranty? That's it. If you go under seventy yeah. percent, which I've never ever heard of any battery doing, I no. think they've, they they tend to just fail critically before they get to seventy percent. Like so, one cell pack just goes to zero, and then yeah. obviously. At that point, the battery's toast because they don't make it easy to just replace. It's not like the Model S and X, which were modular, and um, the Model 3 is not like that. So I, I'm sure some people are repairing them, but I don't know how to go about doing that one. Yeah. So if you are thinking about buying a Tesla and you want to absolutely minimise or work out what the degradation is, if that's important to you, then this is a way of doing it. So using the uh, uh, using this particular uh, system. What's it called again? OBD uh, Link. LX. So the hardware is it's just a wiring harness and it's a, yeah, th this is just OBD link. They make a few different models depending on what phone you're using, but it's called Scan My Tesla. Scan I my think Tesla. it's like seven or eight quid. Oh wow. Um, okay. This was more like a hundred pound for this bit, yep. the hardware, but this this bit here is, um, the, the actual app itself is, is, is relatively cheap and works with all Tesla models. There we go. So that is how to test the degradation uh, on the battery of a Tesla. But you know, I knew that the degradation was uh sort of certainly over five percent on this card judging by the amount of range it had so i'm just going to keep an eye on it 
and um, it'd be really interesting. I, I'm sure there's lots of other people out there that uh, are looking to see what um, what companies and what people are out there being able to change batteries and upgrade them and fix and repair them because obviously Model X and Model S batteries, you can repair the modules. The Model 3 and the Y because it's a much longer style battery pack and a bit harder to um, to repair at the moment. I'm sure that will change over time, um, hopefully in time for when this might need some assistance. But thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.